Hello, my name is Dr. James Burby. I'm an emergency physician in Wisconsin, and I'm also the founder of WISCMED, the company that makes the Whisper Digital Otoscope. Welcome to our presentation on normal ear anatomy as seen by an otoscope. In this presentation, we'll focus on the features of an eardrum that you should be able to see with standard otoscopy. Additional information can be found at www.wismed.com slash whisper university, including this presentation in its original PowerPoint format, along with many more examples of interesting images. To begin, it's important that you understand the anatomy of the normal ear. This drawing represents a cutout view of a right ear. And with this view, we can go over the important features and how they relate to otoscopy. First, you'll note the external ear canal. The canal is the piece of anatomy that brings sound waves from the outside to the eardrum. It's also the place where you're not supposed to put your Q-tip, but I know that all of you do it anyway. Next is the eardrum. The eardrum is a piece of very thin tissue, actually three layers, but still very thin and transparent, that separates the external ear canal from the middle ear. It is the thing that translates movement of sound waves to mechanical motion. And that mechanical motion is communicated via the chain of bones in the middle ear to the inner ear. Next is the middle ear space. The middle ear space is what contains the three bones that we previously mentioned that translate the motion of the eardrum to a mechanical motion that is communicated to the inner ear. The inner ear is where mechanical motion is translated into electrical motion. This is an area that we can never see with the otoscope under normal circumstances, unless there would be a situation of significant trauma. But in a normal exam, you will never see the inner ear. The best that we can hope for is certain elements of the middle ear. And then finally is the eustachian tube. The eustachian tube is the venting system for the middle ear cavity. For the eardrum to work properly, it's important that the pressure on both sides of the eardrum be the same. The external portion of the ear is connected to the outside world via the ear canal. The eustachian tube connects the middle ear portion, the other side of the eardrum, with the back of the nasal cavity. And in a properly functioning eustachian tube, where somebody doesn't have, for example, a viral infection, it keeps the pressure the same on both sides and makes sure that there's no discomfort that could often be associated with a pressure difference across the eardrum. The otoscope examination occurs when the otoscope is placed in the external ear canal to view the eardrum. And oftentimes, because of the transparency of the eardrum, you can actually see the structures behind it, as we'll point out in this presentation. So all this sounds nice and straightforward and very simple, but of course, the real world is never like that and there's no reason why an ear exam should be any different. The challenge is due to two factors. First, the ear canal is not actually a straight tube. It's got some amount of bend in it that makes it a bit challenging to be able to view the eardrum from the external canal. The second problem is that the, eardrum, the ear canal is almost always partially occluded by earwax, technical term for earwax is cerumen. So the challenge really then is you have to get a good full view of the eardrum to be able to make a statement about the condition of the ear. And you are vexed by a combination of a tube that is not straight and a tube that is often occluded by earwax, which is important physiologically to protect the ear. So the question then is, how do we get a good view of the eardrum, also known as the tympanic membrane, when there are these challenges that we just discussed? And the answer is a tool such as a digital otoscope or some other device that allows you to navigate those two challenges. Let me show you what an exam looks like with the Whisper Digital Otoscope. So I'm playing the video now. The otoscope's entering the ear, wax all around. We're able to go through a window in the wax and get a beautiful view of a completely normal tympanic membrane or eardrum. Let me play that for you one more time. Entering the external canal, wax all around, beautiful view of a healthy and normal eardrum, and withdrawing. All right, great. So now that we've discussed the anatomy of the 
ear. And we've talked about how we make sure that we get a good view of the eardrum so that we can make statements about it. Let's go ahead and dive into the features of the eardrum that you should be able to appreciate on standard otoscopy. The first thing that you'll notice is the eardrum itself. The eardrum is the big round thing, about a centimeter in diameter in a typical adult, that's um, round in appearance, often, often described as being pearly gray, uh, and usually somewhat translucent, which means that you can see things that are behind it. The ear canal surrounds the eardrum. The ear canal is the place where the otoscope is inserted and where the gateway to the eardrum occurs. Next is something called the cone of light. The cone of light represents reflected light from the otoscope. It is a feature of a healthy eardrum, and it is because of the concave nature of the eardrum that you get this reflected light. It generally appears, just as shown here, somewhat of a pyramid in shape, originates at the center of the eardrum, and then extends in a pyramid fashion out towards the periphery. And then the last primary feature of the eardrum that you can almost always see is the malleus bone. The malleus is the first bone in the chain of three bones that communicate the movement of the eardrum to the inner ear. The malleus is attached to the eardrum and moves with the eardrum. So the eardrum moves with sound waves, and that sound wave is then transferred to the malleus bone for communication to the inner ear via the chain of bones. One of the great things about the malleus bone is it actually serves as an anatomical compass. You can always tell which ear you're looking at, even if you forget to document it in the medical record, because of the malleus bone. The malleus bone always points towards the face. So in the left ear, you can see that the malleus goes from the center of the ear, drum, up into about the 10 o'clock position, pointing towards the face. You know it's the left ear. For the right ear, the malleus again begins in the middle of the eardrum and goes to about the 2 o'clock position, again pointing towards the face, knowing that it's the right ear. This is one of my favorite features of the malleus bone and also one of my favorite quizzes to give either medical students or residents. Now that we've finished discussing the features of the external ear, let's talk a little bit about the secondary features of the eardrum. And really what we're referring to here are things that you can see in the middle ear because of the transparency or translucency of the eardrum. In particular, the things that we'll be looking at are the bones of the middle ear, the malleus, the incus, and the stapes, often referred to as the hammer, anvil, and stirrup. Of these bones, you can almost always see the malleus, you can often see the incus, and you rarely, if ever, see the stapes in a normal, healthy ear. So first of all, the malleus bone. We've already discussed this. This is a very prominent bone. It's the first bone in the chain of bones. Quick review for you. Is this the left ear or the right ear? Well, you know it must be the left ear because the malleus is starting in the middle and going up towards the 10 o'clock position, pointing towards the face. This must be the left ear that we're looking at. The second bone that you often will be able to see through the eardrum is the incus. The incus is the second bone in the chain of three bones that bring the movement to the inner ear. The malleus and the incus are connected to each other in the superior portion of the ear in a place where you can't really see it on this picture. The other thing that you can sometimes see through the eardrum is the tympanic cavity. The tympanic cavity is really the middle ear and it communicates with the eustachian tube to the back of the nose. As we mentioned before, this is the venting system for the eardrum and it keeps the pressure on both sides of the eardrum the same. The tympanic cavity shadow is often easy to see through the transparent eardrum. In this particular case, the tympanic cavity is here, this shadow. And so what you're actually seeing is you're seeing this dark area behind the eardrum that represents the tympanic cavity, which is then connected to the eustachian tube, which vents at the back of the nose and keeps the pressure on both sides of the eardrum the same. There's a dramatic way of seeing the way that the eustachian tube works to equalize the pressure on both sides of the eardrum, and that's by something called the Valsalva maneuver. You'd be familiar with this, even though if you may not recognize the name. The Valsalva maneuver is what you use in an airplane when you're descending and you begin to have ear discomfort. It's where you close your nose and then you bear down increased pressure in your mouth against a closed mouth. And here's what it looks like 
in terms of the eardrum. So when the person does a Valsalva maneuver, they're increasing the pressure on the back side of the eardrum, and you can clearly see the eardrum moving when they do that. It's a pressure equalization system. Let's watch that one more time. So here's the person bearing down on a closed mouth to increase the pressure in their mouth and nose, and therefore by the eustachian tube to the eardrum, resulting in that movement. Okay, haven't gotten through all the important features of the eardrum in a normal situation. Let's do a quick review and see if we can pick out on this ear that you have not seen before all the different features that we've talked about. So the first thing is, does this represent the left ear or the right ear? Well, because the eardrum, the malleus of the eardrum is starting in the middle and going towards the two o'clock position, pointing towards the face, you know that this must be the right ear. So our malleus again is our anatomical compass pointing towards the face, this must be the right ear that we're looking at. Next question is, what's this big round circular part? Well, that's pretty easy. That's the eardrum, also known as the tympanic membrane. It's the most dramatic and most notable portion of, the, of, the, of what you're looking at when you do an otoscopy exam. What's this area? Well, this area again is the ear canal. This is the area that, this is the canal that leads from the external ear to the eardrum. It's the place where you put the otoscope and it's the place that you should not put your q-tip. What's this feature? This feature is the cone of light. Again, the cone of light indicates a healthy eardrum. It's a reflection of the light from the otoscope back to the viewer off a concave, concave and partially reflective eardrum. And what's the structure? Well, we know this is one of my favorites, the malleus bone, very dramatic, very prevalent. Oftentimes you'll see fine vasculature on the bone. That's a completely normal finding. What about this? That's the incus bone. That's the second bone in the chain of bones that brings the movement of the eardrum to the inner ear. And it's connected to the malleus bone on this side, or um, on one side, and it's connected to the stapes on the other side. And of course, we can never see the stapes. And what's this area? That's the tympanic cavity. And if you'll recall, the tympanic cavity is connected on the other side of the eardrum to the eustachian tube, and that's the ventilation system for the eardrum that keeps the pressure on both sides the same. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this presentation on normal ear anatomy. I hope that by going through all this in a methodical manner and showing you examples of the different features, it now makes a little bit more sense to you. We have additional resources available at www.wiscmed.com slash whisper-university, including a whole library of interesting images and more educational presentations. Thank you.